All right, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. Phil here live on the stream. I apologize that the stream had to shut down and then turn back on there temporarily. Uh, that was due to a Windows driver crash, which happens every once in a while here, and it makes my mic not work. And the only way to get it to fix is to restart uh, OBS completely. OBS is the streaming program that I use. Um, so I'm back. Sorry for that little blip. Welcome. Today is Monday, September 3rd, 2018, and I will start off by saying... Uh, Happy Labor Day, All right? Happy Labor Day, everybody, for those who celebrate it. Many people don't, uh, especially if you're not in the United States. I don't believe anyone else celebrates. I think it's a U.S.-only uh, holiday. <clears throat> Does it really mean anything anymore? Not really, but some people have it off of work, um, depending on what kind of job you have. For most retail stores, it's actually a very busy day, um, and some restaurants as well. But for things like banks and government jobs, I think everyone has today off, if I remember correctly. I don't think anyone works today. So, uh, welcome everyone to my Labor Day streams. Not that, this, not that these were planned as Labor Day streams or whatever. Um, it is now considered the fall gaming season. This week we see some ginormous big releases coming out starting as, as early as tomorrow. Which is quite exciting. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, we've also headed into... Uh, <clears throat> The fall gaming season, or the fall uh, season, when it comes to my perks and the like, when it comes to go sub goals and Patreon and everything, everything's going to be kind of fall and holiday related moving forward. And I announced this yesterday in regards to the sub goals on the stream, which I'll also talk about on this pre stream today. So everything's basically kind of been refreshed and renewed. And starting this week, all new content for you guys when it comes to new games and the like. And this is going to continue on. Um, you know, for a lot of this month. This month is also going to see a lot of fun special events. So let's talk about all of that right now, guys. Okay, first of all, thank you to everyone who pledged to my Patreon in the month of August. All of your pledges by now have processed. And I have messaged all of you on Patreon.com last night to let you know what information I need from you in regards to getting you your perks. Okay, so if you were a patron who contributed in the month of August, please check out Patreon.com. And check out your private messages, and please get me your information so that I can get you your perks. I'd love to get you your perks as soon as possible, okay, guys? <clears throat> okay. Now, let's talk about, schedule-wise, what you guys can expect moving forward. Today, we got more Dark Souls 3. I know two days in a row we're doing Dark Souls 3, and for some people, it's like, oh, man, Dark Souls burnout. And, in fact, someone just tweeted me this morning and said, Phil, you know, I love your streams, but... You've been doing a ton of Dark Souls 3 recently. When will that be over? When will you be moving on to other stuff? The good news is this week is the answer to that. In fact, we're very, very near the end of Dark Souls 3, uh, ma the main game anyway. It's actually just the the final hard-ass DLC that's coming up that's going to be pretty challenging. Uh, but outside of that, we're almost done with the game. Uh, so that's a good thing. And there will be new, new games coming up shortly, as I'm about to explain, okay? Now... Um, today, Dark Souls 3, the first stream, four more hours. What can you guys expect on this stream? Well, first of all, I am going to try to kind of finish up Lothric Castle. Because once you finish it up, then you just basically go to do the final boss, which is the Cinder, of the, or the, the Kiln of the First Flame, right? It's the Soul of Cinder. So I think I'm going to try to finish up Lothric Castle today. I'm almost done with it. I've just got to go and fight the, what is it, the Dragon Knight, or whatever the fuck his name is, Dragon Knight Armor. And then there's one final area that leads up to the Prince's. And then that's done. Then I'm going to probably take on the Nameless King. That could take a while, because if you guys remember, I never beat him legitimately in my first run. Uh, I couldn't. I tried. Boy, did I try. And I could get to his second form, but I never legitimately beat him in my, my first run of the game. So I'm probably going to be giving him a run. And then, once the Nameless King is done, I guess before we beat the game, I'll head into the Ring City DLC, which is, in my opinion, the most challenging part of the game. Um... Except that I do feel that that Freed and Nameless King are the toughest bosses in the game. So I don't actually think that the bosses of Ring City are as hard as some people make them out to be. Um, but it is a fun DLC. It's long. It's challenging. And so I'll probably be doing that. And then finally wrapping up the game. So today, in reality, you know, Lothric Castle and then Nameless King uh, maybe will take up the whole stream. Depending on... Uh, <clears throat> basically depending on how far I get. You know, if, if Nameless King, if I somehow rush through him and beat him, then we'll probably even be doing the Ring City DLC today. But if not, then, you know, it could be a while. You know, Nameless King is a pain in the ass. And I have multiple weapons to try. I could try the Fume Knight Greatsword. I could try 
the Profane Greatsword, and of course now I'm using the Halberd. I also have the um, uh, the Exile Greatsword. So I have multiple weapon loadouts that I can try against this guy to see what works the best against his attack patterns and try to figure out what I do. All right, so that's today's Dark Souls stream. <clears throat> and uh, then tonight, I'm going to be doing some throwback Street Fighter. I have not played old school Street Fighter in a couple of weeks. And the bottom line is, guys... That with all the new content and the new games that are going to be coming out shortly, I may not be able to play Throwback Street Fighter again for a while. Like, maybe every once in a while we'll have a, a, an empty night that I just want to do it for variety. But for the most part, I get the feeling I'm not going to get a chance to really do it because we're going to be busy with all these new releases coming up. Therefore, uh, tonight, Throwback Street Fighter, probably mostly 3 Fighter 3 Third Strike because that seems to be what I get the most matches in. When I try to play Super Turbo, I either get terrible connections, no matches, or tryhards who abuse online gameplay and lag to do shit that doesn't actually work in the real game. Uh, so I don't really enjoy playing Super Turbo online in this collection anymore, but I do enjoy Third Strike, okay? So, <clears throat> should be fun. Um, it should be fun, and I hope that uh, you guys enjoy today's streams. Tomorrow, we start with new content. Tomorrow is the release of Dragon Quest XI. Now, I have not played a Dragon Quest game in years, but I played several of them. I believe I played like 4, 5, 6, and 7. What, whatever ones were made for the Nintendo 3DS and or Game Boy Advance, those are the ones that I've played, and I love them. Tur traditional turn-based JRPGs, great stories, uh, you know, good, really good music, and the graphical style of Dragon Ball. For those who don't know, it's the same artist who does Dragon Ball, uh, also does all the artwork and game design for the Dragon Quest series. So I'm actually very excited to play uh, this game. And I hope that you guys are excited to see me play it as an ongoing JRPG-style playthrough. Will it be my main featured game for a long time? No, it will not. In fact, it's only going to really get two featured streams until it becomes a backburner nighttime stream game. Because it is a JRPG. And I do understand that my main audience, you guys who are here for the earlier streams, want to see more new release gameplay. You want to see more action-based gameplay. I totally understand that. But... Considering that this is a new release, uh, <clears throat> I will uh, definitely be, be enjoying this. I hope that this is going to be good. All right, I hope you guys will check this out at least for a couple sessions. And then those of you who are JRPG fans should have a ton of fun with me as I play this over the course of... I'm going to assume the course of a couple months because from what I'm to understand, it's super long. All Dragon Quest games typically are super long. And I get the feeling this game will be quite long, and, you know, it'll be the, the kind of the game that I do as a nighttime stream every once in a while. So, you know, every week we'll be putting in, a, you know, four, four hours of Dragon Quest XI or whatever, which means it might take quite a while to beat it, okay? But I'm going to stick with it. I mean, I really want to play this game. I'm dying to play it, all right? Um, so that starts tomorrow. That's the mainstream tomorrow. And don't worry, I know people will say, oh, he's doing a JRPG as a mainstream. Not for long, only a couple days, all right? It's going to be the mainstream on Tuesday. Tuesday night, I'm going to be doing some Street Fighter V, another session of Street Fighter V, where more than likely I'm just going to use Akuma again and see how I do. I've actually been getting better. People actually said, you know, when I played uh, on, what was it, Thursday, that I actually did better with Akuma than I had done earlier. And, you know, I'm getting better. Keep playing with them. So I'm probably going to do one more session with Akuma tomorrow night. Um, then on Wednesday, one more mainstream of Dragon Quest XI. So two streams of that this week. And then Wednesday night, I will be doing uh, more Dark Souls 3 for about two hours. Okay? Then on Thursday, there's only one gameplay stream on Thursday with good reason. It's going to be the Battlefield 5 Open Beta. That's right, the Battlefield 5 beta is going open for everyone on Thursday, and I'm going to be checking it out. I hope that you guys will join me, because it's going to help determine <clears throat> whether or not I buy the game. Unlike with Black Ops 4, where I stupidly pre-bought the game, played the beta, and said, wow, I actually don't like this beta, now I'm stuck with the game. With Battlefield 5, I'm actually going to play the beta first, and based off the beta's performance, decide if I actually want to buy the final game or not, okay? So we'll see how this goes. All right, we'll see how this goes, and and you know, based off of this, what happens on Thursday? There'll be one session Thursday night. I am not uh, doing a second stream because it's Cat's birthday, and we're going to be going out to celebrate and have a, a, a dinner together somewhere, a celebratory dinner for her birthday. Okay. Then on Friday, all day long, folks, the big new release, the one that many of you have been waiting for for quite some time, Spider Man, releases this Friday. I'm excited. I've not played a Spider Man game. In quite some time. It's been a long time since there's been a new Spider-Man game. And they always end up being amazingly good playthroughs for me. 
Spider-Man Web of Shadows was the playthrough that put me on the map on YouTube back in 2009. The first video of mine that ever hit a million views. Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, two years later. Another playthrough that exploded in popularity, okay? So, I'm very excited for Spider-Man. In fact, I should have a few surprises in store for you guys regarding Sp the Spider-Man playthrough. One of which will be new animations that are probably going to be catering to the Spider-Man playthrough. Alright, but... Outside of that, maybe a few other things as well, okay? So, should be pretty exciting. An exciting week here, alright? Saturday is my day off. Sunday when I return, more than likely it's going to be more Spider-Man because that's going to be the hot new release. And then next week I'll be balancing between Spider-Man, the conclusion of Dark Souls 3, Dragon Quest, and Street Fighter. So I'm going to have a lot of stuff to juggle next week. It should be a very fun week next week. Um, and then at the end of next week, we got two Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So, should be a great week. I'm really excited. <clears throat> Alright. So, guys. Um, awesome week ahead. Thank you guys for listening, and now you know what's coming up. Also, coming up later this month, it is going to be my 10th anniversary as a content creator. For those who don't know, my very first gameplay video with commentary over it was Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Um... And that was in September of 2008. So coming up this month will actually be my legit 10th anniversary as a, as a content creator of gameplay. And to celebrate, we're going to be doing a, a throwback stream where I'm going to be sitting here with you guys watching old stuff for my 10-year legacy on the internet. Uh, people, uh, patrons have been nominating some of the best things to watch for a long time. And I'm going to basically be going through the list, reviewing all these fun things on the fly. And it's going to be a really great stream where we all kind of react to the fun stuff of the past, okay? Um, I'm excited. I'm excited to reminisce with you guys, to watch these videos and talk with you about, you know, all the different things that were happening at the time. You know, it's really going to be awesome. I think it was 10 years that I've been doing this. It's pretty crazy. Um, <clears throat> so that's going to be fun. When is that going to be? That's going to be later on in the month. Uh, pro more than likely the third week of the month, if not the last week of the month. Because guess what? There's, like, no new releases in the second half of the month. It sucks because originally there was supposed to be a bunch, and most of them got delayed. I mean, we had Spyro that was going to be there, and there was another one, too. Oh, uh, Code Vein, and both of those games got delayed. So, really, late September, there's not much going on. It'll probably just be doing ongoing stuff. And, by the way, also, at some point this month, I'll be starting up the Patrons' Choice playthrough. Right now, the patrons are voting on what game they want to see me play. I believe... It's still Phoenix Wright in the lead by a single vote, but I could be wrong because I did not check the results today. It might have updated. Last time I checked, it was Phoenix Wright, Trials and Tribulations in first. Max Payne behind it by one single vote. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so, whew, what a month we've got. We've got brand new releases. We've got, you know, ongoing playthroughs. We've got retro events to celebrate my 10th anniversary. We've got a lot of fun stuff going on this month, and I hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll, we'll check it out every day if you can. All right? All righty then. Now, folks, what else do I have to talk about? Well, what I would like to do is I would like to tell you guys about the monthly sub goals because they have been updated for the month of September. And as I expected, as you guys can see, our total subs have dipped dramatically. And you may say, well, why did that happen? Well, guys, it's actually because in late July... And I believe, actually, it was the first couple days of August as well. We had a lot of gifted subs. People came in here and were gifting subs like crazy because they wanted to hit new sub goals and the like, and they wanted to be supportive. But all those gifted subs have expired, all right? So we literally, in the last week, dipped about 60-some subs, and there's nothing you can do about it. I knew that was going to happen, which is why when I created our new sub goals for the month, I, re I made them more realistic. Instead of setting them sky high, I waited for the subs to dip before I set them, all right? So what are the subscriber goals <clears throat> for the month of September? Well, we hit 525 subs. I'm going to be doing a special Halloween Horror Games Marathon. This is an annual event that I've held for many years. I really enjoy doing it. All right. What happens is if we hit that goal, people will be nominating and voting on horror-themed games for me to play on Halloween. And I'll be dressing up. I'll be going out and getting a costume and dressing up for that marathon-style horror stream. Okay? Okay. I do it every year, and it seems to... Last year was really good. Like, last year, people really enjoyed the variety of games that I played, and it was a really successful event, okay? Now, if we hit a Tier 2 goal, which would be 550 subs at any point during the, the month of September, all right? 
I'm going to go a step further, and I'm going to do two things. All right? I'm going to allow people to kind of mold what costume I get, meaning I'll have categories that people will be able to vote on. And depending on how the voting goes, that'll determine what style of costume I get for this event. All right? And... I will uh, basically try to do some decorations. I'll try to decorate the office or whatever uh, to make it kind of look Halloween-y for the month, all right? And then if we hit 575 subs for this month, which I've never hit that before. That would actually be the stretch goal. I've never hit 575 subscribers ever on this channel before, ever. I will do something extra special. Like, I will think up something really cool and fun for this event that, you know, would be unique, but... I'm going to just leave that out there because that's going to be a very big, a very big stretch to get, you know, 575 subs when I've never hit that many before. I'd be very surprised if I hit that this month, okay? So the 525 goal is very realistic. I mean, we've, we've been there many times before, especially with the new games coming out soon. Uh, I think you guys are going to want to subscribe, especially if you're not. And by the way, you may, my guys may not realize this, but at some point during this month, it's going to be September here on Twitch. Meaning, if you were gifted a sub, you can renew that sub for a dollar. Now, they haven't exactly said exactly when that's going to happen, but that's going to be incentive number one for people to gift subs and number two for people to renew subs on the cheap. So, this is a great opportunity this month for subscribing, okay? Lots of great benefits if we hit the goals, and it's cheaper to do so as well this month, okay? All right, very nice. So, there you go. All right, guys, so... Before we get to gameplay, what I would like to do is, first of all, say thanks for a great summer. Uh, I'll be honest with you guys, both July and August were great streaming months. I got tons of new followers. I got tons of new viewers. Uh, even though those months in particular were pretty dead for new releases, they were. Let's face it, almost no new games of the games that came out, like We Happy Few, were very lackluster. So... It was awesome that you guys came and hung out with me, regardless of the fact that there wasn't much going on in the realm of new content, okay? I appreciate that. And those months were also incredibly profitable here on Twitch. I'm hoping we can keep that up for this obviously busy, hardcore gaming season. I'm hoping to bring in more people who normally wouldn't be here, but now they come in to watch me play the the, uh, the newer releases, right? I think it's going to be a really fun... Uh, a really fun fall gaming season. Seriously, like, I'm very pumped for this one. There's a lot of good... Uh, a lot of good stuff coming up, all right? <clears throat> all right, now, let's talk the plugs. Let's do a quick plugs segment, okay? Then I'm going to do shout-outs for those who cheer, sub, and tip. And in particular, guys, if you guys haven't noticed, the cheering leaderboard for the week has reset. So if you cheer today, you're going to get right up there on the leaderboard because it reset overnight. Right now, we only have one person on that leaderboard out of the top ten. So great opportunity to get noticed today, okay, for your contributions. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys very much for everything. I appreciate all of your support. Ten years I've been able to do this for a hobby, and seven years I've done it for a job. I absolutely love it, and I love these live streams that are more interactive. I love everything about it, all right? I love the fact that people, for the first time in years, are feeling positive about DSP Gaming. I've been getting lots of new subscribers over there for the first time because I'm booting out shorter videos. So, this is a very positive thing, okay? My engagement is up. Everything's going good. All right, but sadly, because of that stupid situation on YouTube where for three weeks I had no ads, it is negatively affecting me in a big way this month when it comes to uh, income. You know, normally I would get a payment from YouTube that would come in around the 10th of the month, and I'm not getting that this month because YouTube screwed me over and didn't pay me any ad revenue uh, because of their own internal error. I guess I should bring that up. It's not me. I didn't do anything wrong. You guys did nothing. They had an internal error and didn't fix it for three weeks. So that being said, um, your support is very appreciated. How can you support? Well, there are many, many ways. I'm going to go through all of them, and then I'm going to tell you the best way right now for the short term. First of all, you can check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil where your monthly pledges earn you personal perks, such as getting your questions answered on my bi-monthly Q&A show, Ask the King, which, by the way, is coming up this month on the 20th. will be the next episode of Ask the King, Okay. Uh, you can get a private Q&A video made. I actually made one last night for a patron, and they already responded and told me they absolutely loved the video. So there you go. People really love those Q&A videos that I make for them privately. Or, or in my opinion, the best perk you can get for pledging to my Patreon is if you pledge 5 bucks or more, you get in on 
all of these events where you get to nominate and vote on stuff. So as I just mentioned, if we hit the sub goal this month for Halloween and you pledge $5 to my Patreon this month, you'll be nominating and voting on the games for the Horror Marathon. You'll also be not, uh, nominating, well, voting on the categories for my costume if we hit the Tier 2 goal. See what I mean? So pledging actually gives you unprecedented amount of control over my content. I got so many events coming up that patrons will be controlling, including, like I said, the 10th anniversary event, the Patrons' Choice playthrough, and upcoming Indies Marathon. All these things are being controlled and molded by the patrons. So please consider pledging if you haven't. It's a great way to, uh, you know, be interactive and be a part of the upcoming events, all right? <clears throat> all right, now in addition to that, you can also check out my Teespring, where I've launched my 10th anniversary line of products. That's right, being a 10-year content creator, I have launched a line of anniversary shirts and the like. In fact, I'll show you one right now. I'm wearing it. My nice King of Retro design. It's really nice. This is the gray design with blue, but there's uh, also many designs with red, and it's not just gray. You can get all different color shirts. Uh, give it a look over on Teespring, and anything you buy obviously helps me out, but you guys get a cool collectible as well. A really cool way to celebrate my 10th anniversary, right? Very nice. Now, if you are live on the stream right now, and what I mean by that is if you're not watching this pre-stream on demand on YouTube, but you're actually here live watching me, um, there are some ways that you can actually get interaction during the live stream, okay? How? Well, allow me to explain, all right? Um, you can either cheer, sub, or tip, and if you do any of those things during the stream, I'm going to give you a verbal shout-out. Now, keep in mind, it's Dark Souls, so if you're cheering, subbing, and tipping during an epic boss fight, I'll probably have to... Uh, you know, give you that shout out immediately after that boss fight ends, okay? But for the most part, um, I, you know, I do a good job of trying to give everyone credit when they do contribute, all right? Now, there's a few criteria to follow. Number one, if you want a shout out, please be positive. Please don't bring in insults for myself or others. Please don't bring in negative memes and detractor stuff for myself or other streamers as well, all right? Please, you know, it's got to keep it positive, all right? Number two, please don't try to derail the topic of, of the stream, you know, bringing in topics like, oh, Phil, what do you think about politics or religion? I'm probably not going to answer those because guess what? Um, you know, it's just, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to derail the stream and get people arguing about those kind of things. This is a gameplay stream that's meant to be chill. It's meant to be a place where people can just hang out and have fun and feel relaxed and like, wow, I could just watch Phil play games and, and have a good time rather than being all, you know, drama-esque and people arguing with each other. All right. That's why I don't bring up those topics. Also, please be as short-worded as possible. The shorter uh, and more brief you are, the better chance I'm going to read your whole message on stream, all right? In general, most people get it. The streams end up being really great, okay? If you'd like to go a step further and maybe get visual recognition for your contributions, you could do that as well. If you either cheer 50 bits or more in a single cheer, or if you tip $5 or more in a single tip, or if you subscribe to the channel and click that share button, that will show up afterward. If you do any of those things, a nice animation will play on the stream as well. <clears throat> In addition, as you can see at the top of your screen, we've got the Stream Stats leaderboard up today. I'll be updating the live tally of subs, cheer, top cheer, and top tip, as well as the death counter for Dark Souls 3 um, actively. Okay, so another chance for recognition, as well as, as I told you guys, the cheering leaderboard reset today. So another chance to get up there and get recognized, since right now there's only three people who've cheered, and it's a top ten. All right, I've already explained how subbing works. With, with regards to the monthly goals, but also if you subscribe to my channel, you'll get access to all of my emotes, which is great because the Street Fighter ones you can use during all the Street Fighter streams. And hint, hint, guys, we may have some emotes coming up that are going to apply to new games. Hint, hint, hint. So if you subscribe now, you'll be the first to be able to use those emotes during those playthroughs, okay? All right. Um... All right, outside of that, guys, the only other thing I want to talk about is the best way you can support me right now. And the, the, the situation I'm in, as I've already explained, is that all my bills are due right now. Like, they're all coming due literally right now, okay? All of my bills. <clears throat> I have to pay them all in a very short period of time. It's all within the first week and a half, usually, of the month where all my bills come due and I have to pay them. The problem is this month, normally I would get a payment around the 10th from YouTube. I'm not getting that payment this month because YouTube screwed me over. So... In the short term, I need help, and how can you help me the best way is to tip me. If you tip me during the streams, I get those funds right away, and those are funds I could put straight towards the bills to get past this, this hurdle I'm facing this month. Uh, the good news is, July was one of my best streaming months ever, and so when I get paid by Twitch around the middle of September, usually it's around the 15th, I should be good. Like, I'll be good for the rest of the month, no problems, but I need to get to that point, okay? 
So please consider tipping me during today's stream. It's the best way to be supportive. It helps me out the most. There's two ways you can do it. If you look below my stream, there's a button that says tip jar. If you click on that, it'll take you to my tips page where you can either leave an anonymous tip or you can put up your name in a message to get credit for it. Or if you don't see that tip jar button, you can just type exclamation point tip into the stream chat and that'll bring up a link that takes you to the very same page. Again, thank you guys so much recently for all of your support for everything. Um, I hope I can you know, get over this hurdle without having financial troubles over drafting and bills unpaid until I get paid. It's just a shitty situation. You know, based off of nonsense, based off of crap that I didn't do wrong, and YouTube, once again, making an internal error, fucking things up, and not fixing it for weeks because that's how they operate. Um, but what I'm hoping is we get over this hurdle, and then the rest of the hardcore gaming season, things go good here, right? And things will pick up, and hopefully, you know, it, this won't matter anymore, okay? All right, guys, thank you for your support. All right. <clears throat> All right. Now, let's do shout-outs, guys. Let's do shout-outs for those who have cheered, subbed, and tipped. Um, and give credit where credit is due. Sounds good? All right. First of all, I have to refresh because my, my laptop is not accurate. Hold on. I have to refresh my, my screen here. Because there were some people who contributed overnight when I was not live. And it's always appreciated when people do contribute when I'm not here. Okay? First of all, we had a triple X. What a name. A triple X. Uh, cheered 500 bits. Thank you for the 500 bit overnight cheer. I appreciate that very much. Uh, Infinite 55 did a 200 bit cheer. Thank you, Infinite 55, for your cheer overnight. And your boy Thump resubbed for the eighth month in a row overnight. So thanks to you guys who I wasn't even here, but you guys kept me in mind. I really do appreciate that. Okay. Now for today, <clears throat> contributions that we've got so far, we start off with Hands Celebratory, who cheered and said, Shout out to Bent Boxer. All right, so thank you again, Celebratory, and shout out to Ben Boxer there. DJ Runo cheered and said, Notice me, Senpai. Well, I have noticed you, DJ Runo. Thank you, by the way, for all the cheering lately. Very much appreciated. AES cheered and said, Thanks again for the private Q&A video. I very much enjoyed it. Well, there you go. Yeah, so with these private Q&A videos, to elaborate just a tiny bit, um, when, I, when I do them, first of all, it's, it's, it's the highest patron-level perk that I do. It's a $50 contribution, which is a lot. A $50 contribution to my Patreon, I understand, is a big hefty one. So what I will do is if you give me a list of questions, I will do my very best to answer them and elaborate on them as much as I can and try to make it as entertaining or informative as I can. So, for example, there were five questions for this video, and I pretty much gave each question about, I don't know, five to seven minutes. So at the end, the video ended up being like 30 minutes long. Now, some videos don't. It all depends on the questions. The more questions, the better questions you ask me, right? the better I'm able to elaborate and give you good answers. So some videos have been quite short, but those people still liked them. They were like, you know, I didn't have much to ask you, but the one question I really had, you answered really well, you know. So consider it. Patreon.com forward slash DarkSideFill. A $50 pledge, you get that private Q&A video. It's yours to do whatever you want with. You can either just keep it to yourself or you can give it to others. It's totally up to you. Um, and people, ever, literally every person who's ever gotten this in the, the years that I've been doing Patreon, love it. They love the private Q&A video perk, so give it a look, okay? <clears throat> All right. Shout out to Timbo. Timbo Slice cheered and says, Fortnite has a summer tourney finals that are going on today at PAX West. You should be there to win that money. Yeah, right. Listen, I am 100% aware that Fortnite is still hot, although if you actually pay attention to the game, you realize it's mostly kids at this point. Like, just as I said when Fortnite first became virally popular... It was virally popular because it was free and because kids could play it on any platform. If kids had a PS4, an Xbox One, a PC, right? And now I believe now they're, you know, now it's on mobile. I don't know if it's on the Switch, but basically Fortnite was on everything for free. So it became the virally popular game for kids to play. And that's why it got so popular. Why do you think Ninja is so popular? Because all kids watch him play. Um, and so even though I understand that some people like this game at a competitive level, I do not. Uh, it's perfectly fine if you do like it at a competitive level. I've played it, and I do not like it. The wonkiness of the gameplay, meaning there's kind of RNG. The building aspect, which I absolutely fucking hate. I hate that in a, in a game that's supposed to be a competitive shooter, you can just on the fly build walls and shit and jump on a tower. It's just stupid, in my opinion. It is. like that. Let's combine Minecraft with a competitive game. So what you did is you took the, the game that was the most popular game for kids, Minecraft, and you combined it with something that was supposed to be competitive for adults. And you know what I mean? Like, it does, for me, that doesn't jive. 
That doesn't mean that there aren't plenty of people who, who legitimately can enjoy this game at a competitive level. It's just not my cup of tea. So, good on them. Anyone who plays at a competitive level, I couldn't do it. I'd probably be smashing my head on my uh, laptop desk here trying to play that game competitively. Even though I've won a match. That's the other thing, too. People are like, oh, that's because you suck. Uh, I've won a match before. It's not that I was terrible at it. It's that I just didn't like it. And I played it. I just did not enjoy it. Um, so, there you go. But anyway, woohoo. Fortnite still going strong for the kitties. Dallas tipped me $5 and says, love you, Phil. Thank you, Dallas, for the tip. In particular, thank you for giving me a tip because I said that's the way that, that's helping me out the most right now. So I really do appreciate it. All right, so that's Dallas. Thank you very, very much. Let's get a space there between the desks. Yes. Um, as I said, that's going to go straight to Bills. It really is. Thank you. Uh, Eternal Napalm did a 100-bit cheer. And that is just, uh, the top cheer of the day. Let's get Eternal Napalm up here on the leaderboard as the top cheerer so far for today. Oops. Okay. And Eternal Napalm says the following. Hold on. Uh, he says, Battlefield 5 looks really bad. It'd be cool seeing you get back into Battlefield 4 instead. You know, it's funny because, I don't know if you guys have heard this, Battlefield 5 was delayed. Originally, Battlefield 5 was supposed to be coming out. Um, uh, when was it? It was coming out, uh, in the, the week right after, hold on a second here, the week after Black Ops 4. So Black Ops 4 was going to be coming out October 12th, and then one week later, uh, Battlefield 5 was going to come out October 19th. But the makers of Battlefield 5 have been testing this game at many different events, including Gamescom, and now at PAX, and at other events. And the overwhelming feedback they were getting was, it's not very good. Like, people were like, man, this really isn't that good. And they were taking feedback and factoring that in and decided they're going to delay the game an extra month. So now Battlefield Five isn't coming out until November 20th. In my opinion, that's a good thing. If you actually think your game's not up to snuff uh, with other competitive shooters, then you should delay it and make it better. And, in my opinion, this is a great move because it will give people who are just dying to play Black Ops 4 a whole fucking month to play it. Until they finally get bored and then say, I want something different. And then maybe they'll get Battlefield 5 for the holidays, right? But, it does need to be said, with so many people who played it and said it wasn't very good, that's kind of alarming, you know what I mean? And the fact that they're only giving it a month. I mean, how can you... Are, 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 it's not like they can redo the entire game in a month, you know what I mean? It's not like they can say, well, people aren't really like digging what we did, so we gotta, you know, we gotta redo some stuff. What are you gonna redo? You know what I mean? Like, what are they gonna redo in a month's time... That's going to effectively change the game and make it so much better that people are going to like it. I don't know, you know. I really don't know. Um, I guess we'll find out, right? I guess we'll find out. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll see moving forward uh, if the game is any good. I mean, this week I'm playing the beta. So I guess I'll get my first taste of it on Thursday and I'll give you my opinion. Okay? Okay. Uh, but anyway, thank you, Eternal Napalm, for that cheer. DJ Runo cheered again. He says, have you ever taken part in a protest or a public event similar to that? Um, man, let me think here. Let me think. Let me give this a look. Let me give this a think here. Hmm. Have I ever taken part in a protest? Like, I... Let me... All right. I've never necessarily did a protest. I've done fundraising events. Like, when I used to do a uh, certain thing where you go for, like, a jog or a walk and you raise funds in order to help a charity and stuff like that. And <clears throat> I have, when I was much younger, I used to do stuff that was religious because, of course, I grew up Catholic. I went to a Catholic schools all the way through high school. So, <clears throat> uh, you know, there were certain events that I would take part of. It wasn't necessarily a protest, but it was more like non nonprofit, trying to help people with stuff, that kind of stuff, charity work. But no, I never did like a protest protest where I was like, you know, I'm against this or I'm against that, and we do nonviolent protest or anything. No, no, never like that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um. All right. Shout outs to Avril's lover who did a 200 bit cheer and said Dallas takes both spots. Love you, Phil. So I guess Avril's lover is saying that they are also the person who who tipped me. If that is the case, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Let's get Avril's lover up as the top cheer. Thank you very much, Avril's lover. And center that. Okay, there we go. Very nice. Okay, thank you for that support. Um, Ripley Atomic just cheered. 
And Ripley Atomic says the following. 10 years of unique commentary and gameplay, which is why it frustrates me. People want you to lower your standards and use green screens and other generic things every other streamer on Twitch does. You've lasted so long because of how different you are. Listen, here, here's my opinion. And this is, this is a very, very um, experienced opinion after doing this for 10 years. Sometimes you do need to change to, to do things that are common practices that will actually improve your content. I'll give you a perfect example. <clears throat> um, going from using a shitty camera pointed at my television to going direct capture was a huge positive. Going from just doing on-demand videos on YouTube to being an interactive live streamer was a huge positive, right? But these were things that I was resistant to. And eventually I softened up to the idea and I made changes and they all worked out positively for the better, right? But I do agree that just doing what everyone else does because everyone does it and it's the status quo is not the way to go, you know? Going ahead and making every video that I do on YouTube an edited video with an edited thumbnail and tags that are abusive to the YouTube system to get people to come watch my content and doing the React videos like every fucking gamer does because they literally take zero effort and have zero quality, but every everyone watches them for some fucking unknown reason. You know what I mean? Like taking all these trends of things that everyone fucking does to be popular. I never really did those things, you know? One of the things that everyone says you need to do if your streamers have a green screen behind you. What What is the benefit exactly? Not a single person has been able to legitimately explain to me having the green screen, how it would benefit me. Like, oh, there would be less around you. Okay, but is my camera super intrusive on gameplay? No, it's not. So then who cares? What's the fucking point? And that's the thing. There's just people who, well, if I got to be successful, I just got to do what these big people do. And it's just, it becomes a mindless drone kind of thing. If you want to stream, you got to do this checklist. And if you don't have the checklist, you can't be successful. If anything, I think I've proven the opposite. You could be different and you can still be successful. Not to say that I haven't adopted a lot of things that popular people have adopted. I mean, I got the stream stats leaderboard, right? That's something that's directly from other streamers, you know? But I do things a lot differently too. I, you know, I'll do advertisements early on in this, this segment now, the pre-stream, and then I don't do them anymore. Like, I will not advertise anymore during my stream. I'll just play the game, you know what I mean? A lot of people have frequent ad breaks. A lot of people have frequent plugs. I don't do that, okay? Because I just say, let's get out of the way. That's what the pre-stream's for. And then let's get onto the gameplay and make the whole stream about fun, interactive gameplay rather than constantly interrupting for different things, okay? Um, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of things that I think are beneficial and there's a lot of things um, that aren't. You know what I mean? So, for me, it's a, it's a mix and it's finding that perfect balance because I do feel that if I did everything that everyone else does, let's have a music playlist on the stream. Let's have text-to-speech. Let's have some weird sounds play every time that someone cheers. Let's do, you know, now the stream, let's have a cup, a fucking tips cup that fills up at the bottom of the screen. You'll have so much shit going on that it's not even about the game anymore. You know what I mean? It's more about all the other shit that distracts the fuck out of you and not actually about playing the game. And that's the thing. I don't ever want my content to become so diluted, uh, di not diluted, diluted, you know, so watered down with all these other distractions and things about making money and plugs and shit. That I don't want it to now, when you watch the game, it's like, well, the game's the backseated thing. That's shitty to me. And yeah, that's why some people say, well, Phil, uh, you know, a lot of streamers, when they don't do a pre-stream, they do what you do on pre-stream during gameplay, to which I say, I don't want to do that. Imagine if, if this entire first hour of me playing Dark Souls 3, I'm talking about my schedule, I'm plugging things, I'm giving shout-outs, and then guess what? I can't get any progress, because I'm not concentrating on the fucking game, you know? So I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm standing around, wasting time. That would, that's not quality gameplay to me. You know what I mean? Um, that is the, the point, is that I don't really want that. I want the gameplay to be about the gameplay. And yes, there's interactivity where we hang out. And certain games, by the way, do cater themselves to an interactive stream. If there's a game that has a lot of downtime, grinding, or boring shit, then let, sure, absolutely, let's talk, right? Let's make the stream about the interactivity because that's one of the advantages of being an interactive streamer. But if I'm playing Dark Fucking Souls, I gotta concentrate on the game, man. I can't be constantly talking. Oh, let's just, let, now let's talk about the the sub goals for this month while I'm fighting this fucking boss that could kill me with one hit. Oh, that sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? No, it's stupid. You gotta concentrate on what the fuck you're doing, you know. And that's why people who complain about the pre-stream just don't get it that I'm different from other people. Or why does it feel conform to what everyone's doing? Because I'm not everyone else. I've always been successful because I'm different. You know what I mean? For ten years. For 10 fucking years, 
I've been different, and that's why I think I've had the longevity that I had. If I just became the same as everyone else, I would have faded into obscurity like a lot of people have. But I'm still fucking here. I've outlasted a lot of people who started after me, right? And that's a cool thing. Okay. Um, all right. Our, our Avril's lover did 100 bit chairs. Don't skip the question. Who do you think is the hottest celebrity? Um, John Stamos, for sure. John Stamos is still at his age smoking hot. Uh, Tazariel cheered. I said, hope the weekend went well. For the most part, it did. Um, I had a fun day off with Cap uh, on Saturday. We got a lot done. We ran around, did a lot of errands, but at the same time, we had some fun. The cool thing is that we haven't, when we, when we, when she first moved in, all right, we were struggling to find time to spend together. And so then we took the day off a week to spend together, but it ended up being just being out all day. The entire day we would be out doing shit and it just got so tiring. We'd come home at the end of the night and be like, God, we're so pooped. You know, that's not how you're supposed to feel on your day off. You're not supposed to come home exhausted. So what we've now done. We split the day where we'll go out in the morning and do things in the morning. Then we come home and we spend some time together at home, whether it's, uh, you know, just doing stuff around the house, whether it's maybe playing a game, whether it's uh, watching something together. And then we go out again for like a dinner or something sometimes. And then we do our grocery shopping. So the, the day is a more laid back day with more variety of stuff rather than, oh, just be out all day and be so fucking tired by the end of the day. And that's been a good thing. You know, you got to find that balance. It's not just about, oh, it's our day off time to go out all day and do stuff. Nah, sometimes you just got to stay home, you know. So it's finding that balance. It really is. It's finding that balance. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to time out all the trolls in the stream chat who are being jerks. There you go. You can all sit outside. There you go. You can literally all sit outside and you can wait. Now, there you go. <laughs> you could all be timed out for whining and complaining because the bottom line is the regulars here are having fun. The regulars love my pre-stream. They understand why it exists. Um, and it's these people who are just being jerks. Uh, start the game. Start the game. Start the game. Little, little brats stopping. Eyes. Start the game. Start the game. <laughs> well, guess what? Go watch another streamer who will be distracted when they play the game and don't get this stuff out of the way first. And go enjoy. But the bottom line is you're here for a reason because you like to see me play games. So it's time to be patient and grow the hell up. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's continue. Shout out to a triple X uh, who also tipped me $5. So he's tied with Dallas te te technically. Um... Let's get them both here. A, a triple, a triple, I can't see. Both of them tip five bucks. There we go. <laughs> he was also the person who cheered overnight. So thank you for the tip. I appreciate that. Um. Okay. Shout out to Eternal Napalm. Who cheered and said, being different has made you the best streamer on Twitch. By the way, it was great seeing Black Flame Freed execute her with her charge attack double side throat cut. Yeah, and it's funny because uh, if you actually uh, watch my original, if you watch my original playthrough of the game, all right, from two years ago, okay, it's been a very different run. It's actually been a very different run from uh, my playthrough this time around. Uh, things that two years ago were very difficult for me were actually easy this playthrough. Champion Gundir, in particular, was very different this time around. I was able to easily dodge and then poke him with the, the Profane Greatsword for monstrous damage, you know? Um, versus this time, or last time, he was the hardest boss for me. I, it took me, what, two and a half hours to beat him because of my build. Now, this time around, I'm fighting Freed... And Freed actually wasn't so difficult for me in 2016. Because if you remember, I was using a shield and a sword. I was faster. I had way more uh, stamina. And what I was able to do in a lot of cases would dodge around and block a few hits and then counterattack her. I remember I was staggering her a lot with, like, multiple hits with one-handed weapons, right? <clears throat> and that was fun, but it's very different from having a two-handed weapon where you can't block and you're trying to stagger her with this slow weapon. It's very hard to even hit her. So, if anything, what this this run of Dark Souls 3 has shown me is that the, they put oh, they purposely 
put a variety in the ball of bosses into the game. All right, they did it on purpose in order to make the game different depending on how you've built your character. There are certain character builds that will just run through certain bosses and other ones will get dominated, right? I like that. <clears throat> I actually really like that about uh, the game is that the variety of content that you get when you can replay the game and re-experience it, you know, differently, so. But anyway, yes, thank you for the cheer, Eternal Napalm. I appreciate that, okay? Um, shout out to Albo... Alboa Gaming, who just subscribed to the channel. Alright, I appreciate that. Alboa Gaming. Thank you very much. Uh, shout out to DJ Runo, who cheered us. Shout out to my boy, your boy Jermaine. There you go. Thank you, DJ Runo, for the cheer. And shout out to your boy Jermaine. Another stream regular. And shout out to Lucas939, who just subscribed to the channel with Twitch Prime. <clears throat> okay. Are we good? That is good. Thank you guys, everyone, for your support. Actually, actually, now let's check subs and update the sub count if we can here. Let's see. 489. We did go up a few subs. That's good. <clears throat> All right. Thank you very much for that. Um... All right, so just a reminder, guys, if you do cheer, sub, or tip during today's stream, I will update the stream stats leaderboard for you. If you are the top cheerer or top tipper, we'll also be periodically checking the sub count for you, working towards those sub goals. And thanks to everyone who did contribute so far today. As you can see, the uh, cheer leaderboard has been, uh, you know, updating itself. That's cool, and it's a good opportunity to get up there since it did reset overnight. All right, guys. Are we good? We good to go? <clears throat> All right, let's, uh, I think it's time to end the pre-stream. I think it's time for us to begin. Let's jump into Dark Souls 3. Like I said, we're trying to finish up Luther Castle, and then probably Nameless King, and then depending on how long all that took, maybe even starting the Ring City DLC, but let's see how long it takes, okay? Fair enough? All right. Thank you, guys, and let's begin. <clears throat> 